Uh, it's just going to be with Keith Jones, is all. Hi, guys. Teaching another six personal perspectives here in Green Valley. So the um, most of my private page will be just the perspectives that are now here. Okay, so we're going to get going. Um, the class I'm teaching today is the six personal perspectives. It's a class, it's a foundational color range class. Gary Keller came up with it long ago. And I'm excited. This is my favorite class to teach. So. Thanks for joining us. It's going to be a long video, so you can stick around, or it'll be reposted if you'd like to watch it another time. Uh, the material I'm going through, I can send you a link. You won't have it now. If you request, just comment below and add your email. I can give you all this material so you can rewatch it later. So uh, again, so we're going to be uh, teaching the six personal perspective. Um, have you guys been to the six personal perspective class yet? Okay, great. That's good. Um, so a little bit about myself. My name is Keith. Uh, I have a small team, the Keith Jones team up in your sister office, visiting uh, the Summerlin office on Charleston Boulevard. Uh, I pay a 27.5% referral fee if you are a Kellerwind agent not in Las Vegas. And then if you guys want to refer something up to my Melissa Wright, I would be happy to do that as well. Um, okay, so what, what the six personal perspective is, and you can, this kind of reference on, uh, starting on the page one there in your material, is uh, Gary Keller um, was looking at the uh, successful individuals and as he was uh, kind of figuring out what was similar about them, he came up with these six personal perspectives. So it, what it is, it's a dif uh, what that differentiates uh, those that achieve at the highest level from those who seem to, uh, don't seem to accomplish much. So um, that's how he put it down. It's a foundational course, I think it's something that my goal today is to get you guys to understand what the six personal perspective is, how to use it in real estate, and also maybe how to move that into other areas of your life. And also, by the end of today, my goal will be that you can uh, fully create a business plan and a four and one. So if you guys don't know what a GPS or a one, three, five is, by the end of the day, you'll have that and it's in your packet. And the four and one helps you bring accountability. So we covered all that. So Introduction to the six personal perspectives. We're going to dive fairly deep. Um, I've taken a workshop and I've condensed it to an hour and a half class. Uh, but by the end, you should have a good idea of, of where you sit with the six personal perspectives, um, how to maybe make some upgrades, as well as if you'd like to have a business plan, something simple, it'll have it there. And all the goal settings, keep it real simple. One thing I'd point out is over on the wall over here, that is the six personal perspectives. So it's one of the things that most market centers have on their wall. They just haven't had the class as often as, as they should. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, when we go into defining the six personal perspectives, there's mindset, attitudes, and approach to life. So if someone, actually, before we get started here, I want to interview you guys to introduce yourselves. So, would you like to start? Yeah, I'm Yvonne Paddock, and I have been um, a realtor collectively for about 10 years. And I just joined Keller Williams. Welcome. So, um, just hoping to increase my business, give it a big boost. Okay. So you've been an agent for ten years here, and yeah. then you just made the switch to Keller Williams so that you could take it to the next level. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And my name is Beth Flintland, and I joined Keller Williams about nine months ago, and um, within another uh, just out of school. Okay, so just like around a year for you or so? Yeah, so I'm just getting my feet kind of wet and okay. uh, want to just get that extra boost to okay. get going. It's a new year, 2020, and yep, it's Perfect. a good time. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think that's what's nice about the new year is you get to make some, uh, you know, some strategic changes and yes. get a lot of enthusiasm. And now that we're in February, you know, yes. sometimes we get to kind of test where we're making the right decisions. A lot of tools that I'll roll out to you. This is an interactive class. What I will do is call on you guys to read often, if you don't mind. Uh, and if you do, just, just let me know. And then make sure that we do dive deep. So if you guys have questions about anything I'm covering, please just interrupt me because I might get in the mode and go crazy. Okay. So with that being said, how about if someone reads the mindset is key and your best your agent will win? Okay. Gary said, when you interview the very top people and ask them what their biggest challenge is, invariably they will tell you it is mindset. 
keeping it strong, focused, and positive amid the many challenges they encounter every day on their way to the top. Gary continues, life is an insight to the outside experience. When you get this at the deep level, you realize who you are inside, who you are inside determines and drives what you are outside. The very best achievers know this and therefore truly work on and protect their mindset. I agree 100% how you Yes. They say that life is 10% what happens and 90% how you react to that, mm -hmm. right? And that's where the mindset's important. Check. So, as we go, this, these are the defining the six personal perspectives, okay? So you'll have this page. It's going to be a couple weeks, or you know what? It's actually not. I didn't have this one uh, for you to fill out at this time. There's one toward the end that actually has more. This will take up on the So, uh, committing to step mas self mastery is step one. Uh, what that would look like is I'm going to nail it, I'm going to master this. Committing to the 80 20 principle would look like I'm going to focus on my big rocks. Moving from E to P, as I'm purposeful about breaking through my ceiling of achievement and being. Uh, may be learning based the foundation of your action plan is I'm willing, I am willing to be taught, I'm always pursuing learning. Removing your limiting beliefs, step five is I limit my thinking and my successes. And then step six would be be accountable is mine. So when I look at this, the six personal perspectives and how they step it out, what I would encourage you to do is look at it more of a rating from one to 10, okay? Instead of saying, am I learning based or do I have some beliefs? It's like, at what level am I from one to 10? One being brand new, ton of work, 10 being I've mastered this. And I don't know that you really could rate 10 unless you are getting exactly what you wanted all along for your time. I think we probably get to the, the pinnacle of success and we see the new horizon, right? But I think the easiest way that I like to look at it is which perspectives am I nailing, and which ones could I use a little more purpose in my life? Okay? And there's no judgment, it's more of an awareness. Okay? So, I actually don't have do the reality check on my slideshow. So I apologize. We're going to stop right here. So, we're actually going to do a little exercise outside of, in class, outside. So, do a reality check. High achievers all have a uh, reality mindset. That is the first thing they do is recognize where they are and proactively take action based on that reality. Without this reality check, many people are under the illusion that they are further along than the actual are. With a sound reality check, you can you know, calibrate the tools and resources that we achieve the goal. So I actually want you to do this. What will the future look like if you don't achieve so you need to think about a goal that you currently have or have had. I've been in real estate for uh, 12 years myself, so I'm sure there's been goals that we've had, maybe a growth plan, something that we want to do that haven't achieved yet, a certain number of transactions. Go ahead and like uh, think about a goal and see if you can write it down. And if I'll give you a hint, can it be a, a financial? It can be anything. It can be anything that has to do with your spiritual life, physical health, personal life, key relationships, your job, your business, or your finances.
One thing that I would say is a little excited about is you just moved real estate companies and you put in a plan with Darren, right? That Darren reached out to Darren and talked about your opportunity. Not in depth. You need to just go do that. Okay, yeah. If you do the that. But the fact that you're making a change mm -hmm. is perfect. Now, you change your environment, which gives you a whole new chance to change your actions mm -hmm. and connect with the right people. And I hope this class is part of your growth. Mm -hmm. But that's what's nice is you're actually taking action. Okay? So, the last question I have is, what does your future look like? So we're five years from now, and you've never made 80,000. Money. Yeah. What do you personally think you miss out on? Um, just, um, just independence and travel and just that a little more financial freedom. Okay. So in five years from now, if you never hit that goal, how are you going to yeah, not very good. <laughs> yeah, not good. Okay. And um, so I would write a little bit about that down in, you know, just, you know, disappointed and, and regrets for the lack of travel and stability for, for yourself, whatever the word is. I think that themes level there is something really important to remember because if you can really future pace of what continue to do the same thing and stay in your comfort zone, like if you can actually bring it, the future of just being the same you've been year after year and what you haven't got, and bring that pain now, it's gonna help you start to take some action to form the habits that you know you need to form to get to the next level. Does that make sense? So the pain, even though it's not always fun to talk about, I'm so thankful that you are, um, and that's not, uh, it's definitely where you can get more motivation and dwell, not dwelling, but at least becoming aware of Okay, so let's move on from that. So the next thing is gonna be an interesting exercise. We're gonna do this as well, quickly. So have you guys read the One Thing Book yet? Yes, no, I have that. The One Thing Book, it's a bestseller. It, Gary Keller and Jay Papasan wrote it. It is an amazing book, especially when it comes to uh, uh, efficiency and habit forming, okay? So there's a focusing question in the One Thing. What it is is, What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else can be easier or unnecessary? Okay, so the you can actually apply this. The focusing question can be applied towards all seven circles. So these seven circles are something that I would uh, become familiar with and also that focusing question. What we're gonna do here is we wanna rate, like on a rating of one to 10, how do we feel in our spiritual life, okay? And on the next page is what you'll actually, where you'll fill it out. So on this page right here, it actually has like my spiritual life. So if you just have both side by side. And for my spiritual life, like we could do a rating from one to 10, just gut feeling. Or importance. How how Not importance, how well you're nailing it, mm. okay? So one would be your never have integrity, you don't even have a goal. 10 is you've had goals for the past and you're exceeding them, okay? Okay, and then on your spiritual life, so then we're gonna do physical health, would be next. And again, it's just a gut reaction. This page you're gonna come back to towards the end. I'm gonna wrap it up. Personalized relationship. So just go ahead and rate all seven of those, and then when you're done, just look at it. Okay. How are you doing? Are you good? Okay. okay. 
What does it take? Maybe what does it take to get a six? Down below, it talks about a way to improve. I don't want you to fill out the lower section yet, because I'm going to give you a ton of information where I think you'll be able to easier yourself discover some things to put in. So we're going to right now marinate on it, and then towards the end or in homework, you can come back to this. Okay. All right. So now we're actually getting back into the uh, class. This was kind of something I added in. All right. So step one is commit to self mastery. Okay. So self mastery is the possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that make you the master of you. When you <clears throat> when you commit to achieving self mastery, you know your goals, you know your strengths and weaknesses, and you know how to work with both your strengths and your weaknesses to reach your goals. Okay. This is going to be in the upper part of the page, and then the next part is going to talk about mastery. So. Mastery is the possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that make you one of the masters of this subject. So, It's a Journey, Not an Event is a book, and in that book, it talks about the key to mastery of any field is the 10,000 hours of practice, time on task over time, is what it means. So have you guys ever heard about that, like you can be a master of anything if you put in 10,000 hours? No. Okay. Wow. So it talks about how um, talent's overrated, it's more about purpose and action. You know, like if, like Terry, if you don't know Terry, but you're going to her lead generation class, she's going to talk about the best way to learn about lead generation is to do lead generation. So the reason I like teaching is when you teach a class, you retain 90% of the information. So if I can engage you enough today, you guys are going to be able to, to get some of the material. But if I didn't even engage you and just talk, 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 you're going to retain like 10 or 20 percent. So teaching is the ultimate form of learning. Doing would be just under that. Okay. So the nice thing is we have opportunity here. We all have been in real estate for 10 years, and I don't know that we've all achieved what we wanted. I haven't. Right. I I know that I have not hit the level of production that I achieved. Is not the ultimate goal. Um, so what have we not? Been on to the next. I kind of duplicated the slide almost. So the one thing, it is a great book. So after you read the MREA, which is the book, did you get the MREA when you joined? Yes. Okay. No, I didn't. Actually, you know. I wrote yours. I said he was going to give it to me, and I totally forgot. Okay, I so haven't read it yet. But. Go remind him. Okay. And get your nose into this book. This is the playbook for real estate. If you're looking to make some changes, the uh, you don't it, this book will help you maybe understand the simplified version of how you can make a few changes and get your goals. Okay. So the the MRA book is the one to read. This one is the one thing is a great. It's a quick read and it's only like uh, 175 pages roughly, and it's a quick read. So it's something you can put in fast. So what it would talk about is what is the one habit I can form such that by forming it, everything else is easier or unnecessary. So that was the question, back to that page where we rated, down below it talks about 10 actions. What would be something we can do in our spiritual life or in our physical life? Like, think of it as a simplified um, how to form a habit. So reading this book would be either number one or number two. If you don't like reading, I've turned myself into a reader now um, through uh, the last couple of years. Uh, but before that, it was harder. This book was easy for me. So if you're not a big reader, read this first, then go into the MRA. Okay? And then the best part about the MRA, it's actually two books in one. The first one is best practices of real estate. The second one is best practice of building a team. Okay? So you could almost get away with just reading the first half if you're not ready to hire an assistant uh, yet. And then once you had an assistant three years from now, you read the book again, and it's going to be a completely different book. I'm on number eight, nine, or ten on reading it, and every time I get more and more, and the best was last year when I read it. Okay? So that was the book. <clears throat> okay, so what is the one habit I can form such that by forming it? Everything else is easier and necessary. That's the next page. So I'm giving you a 66-day calendar. Um, the It's amazing if you just focus on small habits, what you can change. 
if you wanted your research habits, the one thing, or atomic habits is a book that I have here. It was the, it changed, Little Big Counter Culture talks about forming small habits that are easy and then stacking those together and elevating those to the next level so that it's almost painless to form a habit. So sometimes we try to get that three hours of lead generation habit, right? And we put all our effort in and then six weeks later we aren't lead generating three hours a day, you know? So that book gives you a different character, you know, a different perspective. And this is just something that I keep around because like last year I think I completed four or five of these and they were different. They were just at the time doing that circle assessment. I just like, okay, for my job, I need to get there early. So my first last year, I started getting to the office by 7 a.m. in the morning. That was my 66 day commitment. And that was amazing foundation, um, you know, what it did. So you think of what's one habit I can form such that they're forming it. Everything else in my day is easier and necessary. And it, it starts making it where you're uh, making little changes that compound over time into like exactly what you want, right? Okay, so that's what uh, the habit forming calendar looks like. And that's how you can use it, that's how I use it, and you can learn your own doing it. So putting the pieces of self, uh, to achieve self-mastery, this is in your booklet too, because when I first saw this slide, it kind of confused me, so I grabbed this. So the, I'm gonna read this out loud to you. The next step is to identify your strengths and weaknesses. So strengths, good with people. Uncovered. Someone's calling me. Sorry guys, I have it on Do Not Disturb, but someone's calling me on Facebook. Um, <laughs> I can never get away. <laughs> okay. We're still good. All right, so. Okay, so identifying our strengths and weaknesses, once you're aware of these three pieces, you can create a plan and master process. So a plan is a practice script, take bold, call sphere of influence. So that's exactly what I would say on the habit forming that I was trying to coach you into. Like, if you just said, I'm gonna practice scripts daily for the next 66 days, in time, you're gonna get more knowledgeable and you're gonna be more comfortable making those calls. Bold in there would definitely get you out of your comfort zone. So. Uh, sorry if I'm. Uh, no, that's fine. Like such my here. weakness is. Oh. Uncomfortable bringing up business. So you know what? I'm actually the same way because I've moved three times in my real estate career, so it's been so easy for me to get the expired and for sale by owner now business that I haven't actually put as much focus in building those deep relationships. The funny thing is, I prefer deep relationships where we have real trust, mm -hmm. a real bond, where I really can make an impact. And I still haven't mastered the way of bringing that up, you know? So it's funny how we all know that should be where we get into it into our business, and then we, year after year, we're all doing it. Yeah. I just walked it pass right through. Perfect. So I didn't know what you're discovering, but I'm glad it's almost like an aha uh -huh in a sense that you're like, another sign in the ground in my neighborhood. Yeah, like, well, I just yeah. missed out on so much business. I think because I'm not assertive enough, or... Well, to solve your problem, another thing you can add is what would be called never-ending referrals class. It's now a group coaching. It's thirty-nine dollars a month. It's through Maps, so and it's called? it's called never-ending referrals. Never and they do a they do a webinar every Friday, and they help you. Um, they give you scripts for the now. They talk to you about deepening relationships and coming from contribution, and it'll help you eliminate the limiting beliefs. Okay. Nice. So I love that page because when I first see the slide, you see the slide, when you try to do a quick version of this class, it's like you miss all that data. So I think this is a good one to go back on. And the good news is, look, we're in the right place. Like if you're already making some uh, ahas, that's perfect because then you're gonna actually get a lot out of this class. Okay, so the next thing is committing to self-mastery. It's what do we want someday? So like without having a worthy goal, what are we doing to get to it? Like we may not, we may fall short there. So we're not gonna fill this out today, but what I did is I gave you a brain dump, okay? Oh, brain dump. So a brain dump. So 
if you had a personal accomplishment, a financial goal, material possession, like coming up with a someday goal you want, right? Like for me, my my highest income, I think I wanted to have two hundred fifty thousand or five hundred thousand a year net. Although there was something where one year I wanted to have like a much higher than that, like in my fifties, I figured I'll just sell a bunch of stuff and net like two point five million. That was the most I could imagine, right? So what's nice about this is you go all through and you, you have like pick your goals someday and then you just talk about all the things you could do and then you actually fill this form out. And it gives you like a roadmap of success. And when I've done this with people one-on-one, -on -one, when they sit back, they're like, wow, now that I'm bringing it back to right now, to today, to this week, to this month, I see these small action steps and now that big goal, it seems achievable. So this is more of a homework exercise on you picking a goal and going about it. What I would tell you is you can take this and apply it to all seven circles that we talked about. Like, um, I'm not super spiritual, I do believe in God. You know, I don't pray every day. Um, but when I look at spiritual goals, I can definitely uh, have a plan of that. You know? and probably for me, it would be more about um, connecting to others and giving gratitude and giving, right? That would be more of how I would define my spiritual someday goal. But everyone's a little bit different. Okay, so does that make sense? So we need to define the someday goal. It breaks it down into five days, three, or five years, three years, one year. And when you start getting into here, you start really getting into simple actions and you can start making great results, okay? So that's what we're Now, we're going to play this video, okay? So this is how, this is Bruce Hardy. Bruce Hardy is an amazing agent. He's also a regional director and he teaches a class called the ALT Clinic, which is the ultimate uh, teaching opportunity in television. particularly if we want to take our business and our lives to the highest level. You know, when I was uh, younger and lived in Australia, a good friend of mine was a black belt in karate. He invited me to participate in karate, so I joined. I was a white belt. And after about six weeks or so, uh, we were one day practicing sparring. And it was interesting because we were throwing a punch, relatively simple, straightforward punch. Uh, we both knew how to do it. The idea was that we would throw the punch and he would stop two inches from the other person's face. So my friend, the black belt, would do it, and he would snap, his gi would snap, and the, I had wind hitting me in the face, and it was just beautiful the way he threw it. Then it was my turn, and I got down, and I went whack, and I watched my friend fall to the floor, because I hit him, uh, instead of stopping two inches in front of his face. We both knew how to do it, he'd mastered it, I had not. I will tell you, I brought the same approach to my real estate business. I realized my focus had to be on listings. And what I did was by focusing on my listing presentation, practicing over and over and over again, I was able to list over 250 homes a year. There's a wonderful saying out there, and that is amateurs practice to get it right, professionals practice to never get it wrong. My question to you, are you an amateur or are you a professional? Commit to self-mastery. Right over here, put personal, 
And then over here, maybe put others, right? So like when I was doing, I think I had three. I had like for me and my family, for my extended family, and I don't remember the third, but I just did like a pattern to help me get like, what is this all about? Because like real estate's not easy. We have all the freedom we want and we have big goals and it's to stay focused is hard. When you have a powerful statement, it can get there. So I think looking at personal and then how to help others, build that through and then it'll help you formulate a big why statement. What Jerry said towards the end of that section I gave you is that the best way is to focus on uh, personal growth. So uh, I want to be the best I can be. If you really are focused on being the best that you can be, then everything else is going to kind of lead in the right direction. Does that make sense? Um, in bold, which is a class that I've taken 13 times and I highly recommend you take. Yeah, I've actually graduated 13 times. 13 times? Yes. What is it? It's called bold. It's called bold. Mm -hmm. Bold, B-O-L-D. Yep. It's a great class. And when it comes around, it's coming in March, and I think in October we're hosting it. Um, you'll be very interested. Uh, they'll be pitching it to you. So I'll just read you guys my, my big why. So what I do is I keep it in here, and it's changed. I have a couple in here. I'll read you both of them real quick, okay? So uh, this was the one I created in my first goal, uh, which is cool. Um, it says, it, it, I am a Keller Williams Realty Tycoon that gets there um, because of my passion for the company culture. <laughs> so um, the cool thing is I knew I'm emotional. I've read that many times. I just read it on two pages. You know? The trick is, that's what you want. You want something that evokes some sort of passion. passion. Yeah. Because then, you know, you can pull it out on a bad day. Yeah. Right? And uh, anyway, just like this, you know, lucky penny I made. It. <laughs> but the newer one, the one that, um, that I have now, that was kind of the evolution of it, is that um, I'm a leader that creates a big life for my family by helping others get what they want when they want it. So, oh, that's nice. yeah, that's a yeah. little more open. It doesn't have just the Keller Williams involvement. Although, mm -hmm. see, if I were to break it personal business, even others, like the, the Keller Williams is very passionate. Like that's my main um, income and what's been my main passion for, you know, years. Uh, and I'm a little weird because I'm super uh, in love with Keller Williams. <laughs> it's a great That's company. Awesome. But it's just yeah. so excited. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it was just, I connected because it, uh, we have similar beliefs, you know? Yeah. Okay. And if you don't have to, don't fix it, it's not broken. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would fix myself. Anyway, so uh, I didn't plan on sharing my big way, but I'm so glad I did. I actually have a cooler statement that I, I'm supposed to read often that's in my journal, and it was it's something uh, it's something that's called the one thing in three Ps from a different uh, animal. But in Keller Williams, they have what's called the MVVVP: mission, vision, values, belief, and perspective. So if you write down MVVVP on the bottom, once you've created your big uh, why, B B P. Once you've created your big why, then you can definitely get into uh, formulating an MVVVP for yourself and for your business. Um, it's definitely, when you have values and beliefs, It just talks about in that book. The MVVVP will not be, uh, but it will have classes where it is talked about. And I'll give you a lot of resources. The one that I would also write on this page is called The Golden Circle. It's a TED Talk called The Golden Circle by Simon Sinek. He's the one that Gary Keller is going to be um, sharing the stage with because um, he just released a new book. And Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, is great. And that TED Talk will help you define how you communicate to your people. If you've watched that, like what I realized, I wrote The Golden Circle and I just, I care about people. And that's why I like to help people. Like whatever I do, doesn't matter what I do, it's always in pursuit of helping, right? So once I started realizing I need to actually communicate that I care about people to my potential client, it became so much easier. And then I didn't have to worry about call reluctance of not bringing value because I knew that my number one goal was to help them. 
when we're selling, they don't know that's our number one goal, right? Because right. it's right. something in it for us. Yeah. Uh, and so if you just if you can communicate from why you're doing something, then people are more likely to gravitate towards something where we all know how to show homes and you know use things like we all do it a little different, but it's so similar. But there's very few. Uploading the document into our 
online so that our broker can sign. All those things are not what earned you the actual business, it's just things that have to get done. So if we can focus more on our 20% and leverage out our 80%, then we're gonna get better results. The challenge is sometimes we don't even do the 20% because we're using the 80% as avoidance behavior activity, okay? So the 80-20 principle, as we go through, we're gonna just talk about focusing on what really matters, okay? So we're gonna move a little bit past the committee you just held. Perfect. We're going to go to the second Actually, we're going to watch Madison's video. Then we're going to get to the big rock one first. So Madison, you should be the regional director here. Um, the nice thing is everyone in these videos has actually met, which is awesome because Kelly Williams is so easy to meet, like people that are selling at such a high level, and you'll go actually give you valid help. So this is Madison. He has a great um, perspective on the I'm Madison Offenhauser, and I am committed to the 80-20 principle. I can say that honestly, I'm committed to it now. I wasn't always. Um, I remember back when I was a team leader, and I was going to also become an OP. Back then, I think I was a really expert list maker. And I really, I thought I was good at prioritizing what was on that list, but I felt so incredibly torn trying to get all the things done in a day that were important to get done. The big rocks were mixed in with the small things, uh, and I just found that that wasn't really working to the point that I was about to give up my OP role, and I started to interview people through the RS process to replace myself, and in the process of that, oddly enough, just like the week before we go on vacation, I got my house in order, so to speak. I identified the big rocks that I really needed to get done, and in the process of doing that, I found that I was organizing myself really to the 80-20 principle. So once I realized that, I thought, you know what? I think I can actually continue to do both of these roles. And truly, it was the 80-20 principle. I started focusing on my big rocks first. Instead of having a big list where my big rocks were mixed in, I do them first now. Those are definitely done because obviously, if I'm focusing on my 20%, my big rocks, 80% of the results are gonna come from those 20. It has been uh, life-changing for me and my results are much greater. The other part of it is, is I found I became so much more time efficient that I actually am capable of handling more roles and accomplishing more things than I ever thought was possible before. And it's all because of the 80-20 principle. I truly am committed to it. Are you committed to the 80-20 principle? So who would like to read the big rock? Can you do that, Sure. Okay, so be that right there up top. Yep. The top. Mm -hmm. So just read through. So everything, if you don't mind, on the page down to that little big rock. Yep. Okay. The principle of listening intuitive, we feel like the more we do, the greater the results should be. Yet when we prioritize what really matters, we achieve the most. Uh, the last week, the professor decided to teach us about the lesson on priorities. We pulled out a jar. Added, and added as many big rocks as we could fit. We asked the students if it was full and they agreed it was. So the professor picked up the box of pebbles and poured them in. Picked up a box of pebbles. 
He shook the jar lightly. The pebbles, of course, rolled into the open area to the rock. He then asked the students again to prepare with full humor students to read. So at this time, the professor picked up the box, a box of sand and poured it in. Of course, the sand filled up everything else. When he asked the students again if it was full, he heard a few tentative yeses before he pulled out the water and sand and proceeded to fill the jar to the brim. He looked out at the expectant faces. We can all finally agree that this jar is full, right? The students nodded, wondering where he was going with this demonstration. He pulled out another empty jar, identical to the first. More big rocks, uh, more small rocks, more pebbles, more sand, and more water. In reverse order, started with the water. He asked if it was full. <clears throat> he asked if he filled the jar with those things, would there be room for any of the other things? All the students said no. When he got to the big rocks, he explained the, rock, the big rocks must go in first. This jar is symbolic of your life. Everything here represents a priority in life. The big rocks represent the highest priority in your life. Your list of essential non-negotiables. The others represent smaller and less important priorities in your life. If you spend all your time life chasing trivial things that don't matter, you will never achieve your highest priority. Whatever your highest priorities are, make sure that you make adequate time and space in your life to accomplish them. So did you guys get that? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's really good. That's huh? a great demonstration. So that's why I'm giving you this tape. My goal wasn't to print out things on my own time. <laughs> it's like a 50 page handout. But I'm telling you, that is it. Yeah. That if you look at it where the big rocks, the 20% come first, they're actually what get us our results. They're what we should be applying accountability to. Then we fill in with the other things. Everybody's happy. Everything gets done. But we don't not do what we know we're supposed to do, what we said we want to do. Okay? So this page is. It is big time because if you just look at this and you try to explain it like I did last time, it wasn't that good. It's something about reading that story that just gives me a huge aha. Every time, every time, okay? So I'm gonna read the next page. Thank you so much, okay? So uh, extreme Pareto. What Pareto uh, stated, we got to finish. The 80-20 principle is the first word but not the last. Identify your 20%, then go even smaller by finding the vital few of the vital few. Um, the much to do about nothing. While to-do lists serve as useful collection of our best intentions, they also, uh, they also make us follow uh, trivial pursuits. Unimportant stuff that we feel obligated to get done because it's on our list. Achievers operate differently. They have an eye for the essential. Left <coughs> it in its raw state as a simple inventory, a to-do list can easily lead you astray. The first thing on your list is just the first thing you thought of. To-do lists inherently lack the intent of success. Long hours spent checking off a to-do list and ending the day with a full trash can and a clear desk have nothing to do with success. Instead of a to-do list, you need a success list, a list that purposely creates around extraordinary results. To-do lists tend to be long. Success lists are short. One pulls you in all directions. The other aims you in a specific direction. If, you, if your to-do list contains everything, then it probably taking you everywhere but where you really want to go. Does that make sense? No. So what the bold law, which these are bold laws over here, that class I was talking about, mm -hmm. is the law that stands out from this one is don't mistake movement for achievement. Right? If you're busy all day and you create the listing presentation and the buyer presentation and this and that, and at the end of the day you didn't make any calls to try to find a buyer or seller, you feel like you did good, you might pat yourself in the back, the list could be nine out of ten were done. But then you just do that day after day, and in 90 days, you got no business, right? So we've all been there and did that. So it kind of talks a little bit about the creating a success list down through. Remember that little um, uh, brainstorming brain dump that I gave you guys earlier? Uh -huh. It demonstrates what a 
to-do list, there's nothing wrong with writing a to-do list down. Document all the possible things, then you simplify, then you simplify, and if you keep simplifying, eventually you get down to one. The one big book puts this into practice and really gets you moving forward. Okay? So we're gonna move on to the next. This is actually from book two. And it talks about we're all in real estate, we're all real real tours, right? Mm -hmm. So do you know the five things that realtors the job description for real estate agents are? So, ready? You're only going to build the top section the lower part, just there, because it's there. So, they are to lead generate, lead follow up, go on appointments, negotiate contracts, and practice and multiply. So this is our 20%. Do you guys agree? Okay. So let's say that this is our success list, right? So the to-do list was packet this, packet that, go to this class, right? Those are those are to-do lists. This is success list. What would be one of them that if you did it, everything else would be easier and necessary? What would be the one? that could actually be the one thing to focus on, especially by focusing on it, the other four are easier or unnecessary. Mine would be gone appointments. Okay. And nice. anything else would fall into place. Okay, perfect, go on appointments. What about you, what do you think on that? Uh, follow up, we follow up. Okay. I think you could generate your, but if you don't follow up with them, you're not getting your point. Okay. So you guys are both right. It's, I think it's just the perspective and it might be how many leads you have in your pipeline. Like if you're like me, you generate the lead, but then some slip through the cracks, mm -hmm. then 66 days of lead follow-up will make it where you're now going on more appointments, you're ne negotiating crack, uh, contracts and practice multiple. So um, I don't think there's a wrong way, but I definitely think the right answer on the most is gonna be lead generate, lead follow-up, or go on appointments. If you go on appointments, you're gonna negotiate contracts. You know, and the same thing to be almost for practice only. But what I would say is, these five are important. They are the things to track. I actually called my board coach and said, hey, how do you, would you track negotiating contracts? Like, what would that be? You know? So if you're on a buyer appointment, a seller appointment, if you have an offer on a listing, all those things I asked him, then I started tracking if I negotiated contracts that day. And I've been tracking it for nine months now. So I know how many I'll know this year how many days of the year I actually negotiated contracts. And it's not, not a judgment, I don't have a goal. I do have a goal that I'm negotiating contracts. <laughs> it's not my primary goal. It's more of a, it's more of a um, to do track, not a must track. And did you do that because you wanted to make your home better? At I did it because I, I, um, I read the Atomic Habits and I realized that awareness is actually the most important thing. And my new aha is, if you want to make a change, the first thing you should commit to is awareness. When you're aware of something, you'll naturally gravitate towards, toward that goal. So if, if you want to have a simple goal to put on your 66 day, track what you want to improve. Because like when I knew, when I tracked food for 60 days or this, you, there's just this level of awareness that's elevated and it becomes easier. So instead of worrying about making 20 contacts a day, track how many contacts you have for a day for 66 days. Then make it five, then make it 10, then make it 20. And in, you know, it might take six months, nine months to take a small habit, an easy two minute habit, and stack it into a three hour habit, right? But if you follow this plan, it's easy all the way. So awareness and tracking, I'm a big fan of. That's what, and since I track everything, I track 27 things a day. And it only takes me five minutes because I've developed a system. Oh, wow. So uh, it makes it uh, simple. All right, so we're gonna focus on the core one. So we're gonna do this 
backwards a little bit, okay? The fourth one is the accountability tool, and we're also going to talk about the business funding tool. So I gave you some great resources for the four and one. Okay? I gave you a blank four and one. Okay? This one is the sample one from being an agent. This is the one, the ones I put stars by. If you if you could meet with Darren and he'd help you with the four and one, okay? Uh, but this is the thing that you can quickly set goals around. You want to put big rocks, okay? Then I have two pages that just certain types of goals you could have. Then we have a brain dump on things that have to do with four, four and one. And then we actually have the four and one. So all that's homework. I actually have the questions that they that I that you can ask yourself on the four and one. It's very non-judgmental. Those are out of uh, career visioning. And they're actually on the very last page of this training, oddly enough. Um, but those are the ones that you just look on every Sunday. Ask yourself those or have someone ask you. Um, and it's a great way to have non judgment and just, you know, start creating a better learning circle too. So, um, what I would say, like this one right here, talks about your job goal, business goal, personal, financial, and personal. I gave you one that had job and personal. I used to just focus on the job one, and it looked a lot like that. It, MREA, agent one, you know, make sure you go on six appointments, convert two contracts, this, that. But I found that it is fun to have some sort of personal thing involved in there, okay? So those resources right there should be good enough where you could actually create a form one for yourself. And if not, you could always reach out to me, okay? Um, so we're gonna talk about time blocking. Come over and see though. So time blocking, managing your eighty percent. So people think there is never enough time to be successful, but there is when you time block it. How many people time block? Not good at it. <laughs> do you do it, or are you just not good at it? I'm not. I try, but then it doesn't happen. I mean, life just gets in the way. It's just crazy. My little wife's fun. Okay. I do nails. Oh, you do? No, so awesome. Um, everything, yeah. So you have a really, really long. So what are your typical hours on, like for your other job? Um, it could be about, you know, typically three days, maybe four days a week. Um, okay, so three or four. How many appointments do you uh, have on those days you work? Gosh, it just depends. I mean, you know. Probably have like six. the time block is nice because then they say they're coming in noon you have them there and sometimes they don't show up right yeah i've done it over 30 years so no they show up they show but up. That's what I want to ask. yeah okay. but um you know just people are not um loyal like they were 20 years ago mm. in the industry i mean and i find that in real estate if you're not you know, just right there at their beck and call, they move on. Even if they they know you and... Yeah, you know what, I mean, I agree with a lot of that. What I would say is that, um, look into that never ending referral class. Because what happens is that, um, I know I don't call my people once a quarter and have something at their door once a quarter and invite them to events like I should. So they're, it's not that they're not loyal, it's that they're being inundated with information all the time. And, you know, they probably love the way you've done their nails, but then they get the coupon from someone, you know, that has a discount and they yeah. try it and they like, yeah, maybe, you know, or they, you know, this, that, or the other. There's a lot of reasons for it, but a solution for, to get better level real estate might be to look at the never ending referrals or a class that focuses on that. And then they might have some great dollars in it. So I don't mean to be rude, but we always can be a little bit better. And the biggest challenge right now is the technology uh, revolution, right? So like people are on social media and these, if they're 
talking. It seems like they're talking through their spouse. I need to get my nails done. On social media, all of a sudden, there's nail ads. <laughs> oh, so, I so, yeah, so, so, yeah. so there are disturbances in our world right now yeah, that we bad. have to oh. overcome. But that's just the way that we can either choose to get out of the sales business or we can choose to use it to our advantage. So we're obviously choosing it to use it to our advantage. Okay. So uh, I think you, I love that you time block and I love your, you know, talk about loyalty. I think loyalty is key. That's why I'm so loyal. I find that if it's not broken and people are treating right, I'm going to stay loyal. And that it is hard. You don't see very many professional athletes like Kobe that, you know, spend his whole year or his whole career at one team and things like that. Um, so, I still think it's up to us to be a little better. Okay? So, I'm glad you use time block. And for you that don't, what I would say is we'll read a little bit about time blocking real quick, though, okay? So, um, people think there's never enough time to be successful, but when you time block, um, you, you, make, you can make it happen. Producers, productive action transform minds. Putting together a life of extraordinary results simply comes down to getting the most out of what you do when <clears throat> what you do matters. So the four keys to be successful in time block. Be consistent enough to set the habit. Be thoughtful and purposeful about the items you list on your calendar. Always time block with 20% that ensures your success and the success of your business. And if you replace, if you erase, you must replace. So, I would only time block the easy way would be just to time block things that are on your four and one. Okay, here's just a little sample one. I have a crazy good time block that I don't follow as well as I should. But what I do is I time block really well in the morning, keep it tight in the morning. I try not to, if I move those, I'm gonna replace those. And in the afternoon, I have two floating appointments that you know that I, my goal is to, to get on one and three. And I call them opportunity one opportunity to, so when that meter goes off at one, and I'm not at the door of a house or a seamless buyer, I know I missed an opportunity, right, being aware, but I also know that I have 40 opportunities a month, and my goal is to really make sure at this point I hold six of them, so it's not a, it's not a judgment thing, it's just that's how I have it set up, so until noon, strictly time block, follow it to the best of my ability, bring accountability there. If I replace, if I erase it with like a signing, I want to replace that. In the afternoon, have opportunities for learning, appointments, keep it fluid. That's what works for me, okay? There's a lot of good resources on how to do that. Okay, so uh, protecting your time block. So, I love this one too. And here's what it says up at the top of it, page 45. The world doesn't know your purpose and priorities, and it isn't responsible for them. You are. Okay, so I like to go around the office and have friends and have conversations, right? Whenever I'm at my best, I'm in my office with a, with facing with my back to the door, and I have something on my door that blocks it that says, please don't bother me right now. I'm busy. So I have built a bunker. Okay, so you want to build a bunker. You want to store provisions, sweep for mind, and enlist support, okay? Some of the people we need to enlist support from would be our spouse, if you guys are married. I, and my wife's great. When I first got to the wings, first tried to start protecting one hour a day, you know, it was a learning curve. Like, you really, I can't call you right now because it's 9.30 and you're on the phone. Yeah, babe, like, call me at 10.30 and I'll answer. Okay, you know, so after time, you gotta treat, you gotta teach people how to treat. Um, but enlisting support. There's definitely some fun ways that top agents will use their assistants, you know, put the, give their phones to the person. So when you really talk about being in your bunker, doing what we need to do, there's so many distractions that we have to be good about focusing. The best thing I would say what we've learned so far, honestly, is to start helping us define our goal better and why we're doing it, and then that'll almost naturally Good. This is out of the one thing. 
big book right here, and it talks about work-life counterbalancing. So as real estate agents think that's one of our hardest parts. Okay, so protecting your time life. The world doesn't know your purpose and your priorities and who you're responsible for who you are. So when we're working, sometimes we can be working like 60 hours a week and sometimes we don't need to, right? Like sometimes there's where you have to go real long, like you want to transition back full time in real estate. So you're putting effort in real estate and then you're still putting the same time in the salon so your life is a little bit chaotic, I would assume, am I right? Yeah. So there are times where that's like, hey, honey, I'm going to work my butt off for the next couple months, I need you to be there for me, right? And that's easy. Now what you do in work is you go long, you do that intense work and then you go take a break. So you go long on work, but at home life, you wanna go short, okay? Like I have three kids, so if I miss one flag football game, I'm okay. If I miss three, not okay, right? So if I have a really great appointment I have to be at, I might move that, I time lock that stuff. My, the games when I got that schedule is so important to me, I put all the games in my calendar, right? And I just deleted that off, that was the off for me. But if I had a million dollar buyer that was ready to make an offer, am I gonna go? Probably. Maybe not the third time though, because you can't, you can't short at home because that's, you're affecting other people and it's gonna affect your energy. So in the one thing book, we'll give you more research resources on how to protect the time so that you're going short at home. You know, you have one, one uh, we can't go to dinner this weekend today because I have this plan. But then next week, maybe you go twice. So you want to be quick at the home life on work. It's okay to do these 90 day sprints where it's, you know, back against the wall. Even in bold, that's what they give you for a little weather. Okay? Are we still doing good? I'm going to need, it's going to take me until 45 after. Will that be okay for you? Uh, uh, about one. So you have to get out here. Um, okay. okay. I'll make sure we get that done and still cover all the materials. Okay. So it's sensitivity time. I know we started a little late. Uh, okay. So does this make a little bit of sense? You really need the one thing book, especially if you have two things for you because you're juggling them. No offense, not trying to say something with you. Oh, no. It's not, no, no. Five, I definitely but, need that book too. Mm -hmm. But if you have having two okay. careers, like you technically have two things, and what you need is when you time block for that, you need to be 100% present, and when you time block for real estate, you need to be 100% present. And you can actually, the good news is you can kind of do both you know, to get more clients and others. Yeah, I would think so too, I'm right? Sure that's already been there. Well, kind of, without being. We'll talk about that yeah. more in the limiting yeah. belief section. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so any ahas from the 80 20 principle? to your big rocks for 20%. Put it under four in one. Go back to that tool. And once I um, give you a little bit of information on the GPS, the goal planning, once you have your goals simple on one page, it's a lot easier to create your formula, okay? All right. So here's my question. Do you use a four in one? Have you read the one thing? Do you time block? Do you complete a morning ritual? Has anyone ever done a morning ritual? And do you track your numbers? So I've done a morning ritual every day since January 1st of 2019. It is by far the best thing for me because it helps me set that intention and set daily goals and have daily clarity, which is kind of like the day. And I do like so many things right in that hour. I meditate, I read, I do affirmations, I do gratitude, I exercise, all those things are just nice buttoned up into this half hour, hour long plan where it's just a habit and it just gets done. So like I was never, reading comprehension was like the lowest thing, my weakness. Now I, I really do comprehend at a better level and I enjoy the book. And I only read books that I enjoy. And I've been reading, I read Atomic Habits twice last year. It was that good of a book. Okay, so moving from E to P. E to P is my, is my favorite um, uh, perspective. So if you go to your second page on E to P, it actually breaks down.
down the focus strategic options. So this page is one to come back to. That's one to earmark and come back to. It is E2P is my business. That's what this is about to start. But I want to move on to Brenda to watch the video because I really find Brenda is, you know, I haven't met Brenda in any time. I feel like I have, but that's just because I'm standing in the room and looking at my face. I've never personally met Brenda. Hi, I'm Brenda Benson, and I've experienced moving from E to P, entrepreneurial to purposeful, and I want to share a personal story with you about how that happened in my own career. As I entered the real estate field, I began to lead generate, and in my lead generation process, I just kind of winged it. I, that's what I call winging it. I was not purposeful. I lead generated when it was convenient. I lead generated when I was around familiar faces. I lead generated when I was in a familiar environment. And guess what? My results reflected the haphazardness of that lead generation. When I became purposeful, my results showed that purposefulness. As I look to pick up the phone and make those calls, and I block time for my lead generation, my appointments went up. When my appointments went up, my actual results reflected those appointments. So I know in my own life, just through lead generating, and knowing when I was in E versus when I was in P, that my results were different when I became a purposeful lead generator. And I know that can happen for you. So let me share with you five quick concepts that really helped me move from E to P. Number one, focus. Focus on that 20%. Number two, create strategies and action items that will support you staying in that focus 20%. Number three, follow the model. The next item would be to install and implement the systems. Implement systems that support the model. And finally, number five, be accountable. Make sure that you're tracking and you're looking at, as I was, the entrepreneurial piece versus the purposeful piece. So if you are willing to embrace these five quick concepts that I just shared with you, your world can change just like mine. Are you willing to move from entrepreneurial to purposeful? Okay. So, I love that. So, here's what she talked about. She didn't talk about the entrepreneurial side, but the entrepreneurial really comes down to like what's natural, what we, what we, what would be our strength. Like for me, you know, you might have like uh, doing open houses would be the best way of doing business. So you get in, you you try that. And then 90 days later, you try the next object, the next object. But you never really like said, what are others doing? What do I do for my database to remind them? And you start building, you get 10% returns. So the entrepreneurial, there's something wrong with it. It just really is human nature. And once you can become purposeful of the thing, and you start implementing these five things. So we didn't dwell as much on the what we're probably doing now and what that meant, but let's just talk about the solution. So, Step one, focus, writing your goals down. Did you know that having your goals written down, it gives you a 39% chance of success? Okay, 39.2. Um, focusing on 20%, we've kind of talked a lot about that already, right? Finding strategic options, how can this be done? Are there different, better ways to do it? Uh, looking for models to follow, attending training that teaches you how to get where you want to go, identify mentors, people who have done it, this book, is definitely going to be E to P. This is, they took best practices from the top agents, they put it in a book, so this book represents E to P. Just like the one thing, I hope you guys understood, that's the 80-20 principle in print. Focusing on the right things, 80-20, E to P would be the MRA, and actually why we have the MRA. Okay? Installing systems, time blocking, practicing scripts, creating checklists, making sure that systems you install are working consistently and effectively, so you're inspecting what you expect. Bring in accountability, measure what you do, have the form one uh, filled out and have an accountability partner. 
if you have accountability and a written goal, your uh, chances of success go up to 79%. 79% with a written goal with accountability. Okay? So what I like about EDP is EDP is the one that has all of them intertwined in one, right? It has a 20%. It's gonna, you're gonna find out later about mentors on the being accountable, time blocking 20%. So the E to P is my favorite one. Okay. All right, so the next thing I gave you is this. This is what, uh, we talked a lot about setting goals, and we had a lot, that page right there. Uh, it looks slightly different. So we talked a lot about setting goals. You guys are like, probably going to set goals, I hope, right? Both of you guys are going to set goals. This is what I use to help me see if the goals work. Okay? So each time you have a goal that you're putting on your 4 and one or your 1 through 5, which is what you're going to learn next, you want to make sure it's specific and detailed, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. Okay? So they have to be smart goals. Okay? Now, the fifth model is one I got out of Unbeatable Mind Academy uh, by Mark Klein. And the FITS is really cool. So once you have a goal, you can run it through this FITS model. Does it fit my big why? Is it important to my big why? Is the timing right? Is it the next domino? Is it what I should be focusing on right now? Is it simple, right? Is it, uh, uh, is it simple enough for us to implement? Because when you get to chaotic, like tracking 27 things, I wouldn't even show you what I track because there's no way you'd want to track that, right? You might want to track two or three things. Yeah, that's no problem. But it's too complicated, right? Now, what I actually put pressure on is to simplify it. But, you know, some systems can be a little uh, complicated. If I were trying to sell my system, I'd have to dummy it down because it's just too much. Make sense? Okay, so running your goals through this would be ultimately successful, okay? It's a simple process. So now we're not, this isn't in there, but I'm giving you a GPS here. Okay, so I have a generic GPS and the same brain though, and a blank GPS. This is my favorite GPS. It has your goal, the year, and it has priority number one, priority number two, priority number three, who's to do it and by when. Right, there's certain things you may need a uh, relocation packet for your business plan, but that doesn't need to get done so easy. You know, right now you're focusing on your new, you, you guys aren't, you might have a buyer's consultation, listing consultation would be soon, but a relocation package could be the third quarter. So by who's gonna do it, most of us would, would be us, by when would be something to do with us. So when you create a GPS, go to the blank one real quick, and I'll give you what I think is best, is there's, I use it on B, like my growth goal, do action goal, and achieve like my result. That's what I do. What the one that I recommend is priority number one should be based around leads. Priority number two should be based around listings. And priority three can be based around leverage, people, systems, and tools. Okay? So that's, do you guys see the diagram here? reason I said leads, listings, leverage, the three L's. So if you had those as your priority, it could work. Now another example I think is really beneficial is sellers, buyers, and leverage. So how are you going to get your sellers, how are you going to get your buyers, and how are you going to get your like, you know, systems, tools, things like that in place. Does it make sense? So if you think about that, it'll help you. You're going to need a brain dump. Again, there's a class for that. Gary teaches amazing business planning, and there's more resources on Cable News Connect. But the brain dump to the GPS, if you have that, along with your brain dump for your goal setting for now, brain dump for your GPS, brain dump for the four and one. Those are basically all part of the one thing workshop class that I took out for this. Okay? So getting a GPS is nice. Having a one-page business plan is super 
She is an elite trainer, and I love her. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, I'm Georgia Alpazar, Regional Director of the North Florida Region. I made Learning Base the foundation for my action plan from the time I started with Keller Williams in 1999. I quickly learned that Keller Williams was a training and coaching company that happened to sell real estate. I was amazed at all of the training available to help agents go from having a sales job to teaching them how to run a real estate business and develop into leaders. As a former team leader in Plano, Texas, I took every opportunity to attend agent training classes and leadership classes. I then brought that information back to our market center and used this to teach our agents. I know that being learning based and continuing to attend the KWU and regional training events resulted in my leadership opportunities with Keller Williams as a team leader and now in my OP, regional director and master faculty roles. Being learning based provides you the opportunity to use the 80-20 model effectively to master what you need to do to save your 20%. It is the key for moving from E to P as you need to learn new models and systems to break through your current ceilings and you continue to reach new ceilings. How do you break through limiting beliefs without learning what it will take to get you out of that fixed mindset and move you into unlimited thinking? Learning based is being accountable to the learned activities you need to do to grow your business and not go into victim mode. All of this takes you to mastery. The mastery of you to have unlimited opportunities in Keller Williams. Make learning based the foundation of your action plan for unlimited success. I did. Okay, so we're going to need to execute this because it is for you. And we can wrap up in 10 more minutes. Do you have 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay. So I just don't want you to be around like we're hustling to get out of here. Right. So um, there's just a few things left. We've actually covered the most of it. Mm -hmm. The last thing I would just encourage you to look at is, is going to be um, when Mo talks about who are her financial role models is to just kind of experience that. What page is it? Oh, that's going to be So Mo's the, the heartbeat of this company. Um, this little section right here talks about those questions to ask yourself about the goal. And uh, I appreciate you being at class, and I apologize that I ran a little late. No we started a little late, and uh, I should have uh, just started on time. I hope I did some good for you. And if you have any questions, you can get my information from there. If you would like to fill out this, then you can just leave it up with Terry. She'll email it to me. So no pressure. And okay. we'll leave some time for you. All right. Okay. It was so nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome to Keller Williams. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure I'll see you. I know. I'm, I'm pretty see. much coming in every day that I have any oh. spare time. Okay. So. Nice. That's my plan. Well, I'm up in the Charleston Hualapai the Summerlin office. I think so. I'm there tomorrow first class okay. with Terry. Yeah, I think she it. does a Friday. She's doing a Friday here. She's yeah. doing the yeah. Friday is going to be the team building mastermind, and tomorrow's the lead generation yeah. mastermind. Yeah, Friday I'm oh, well, okay. mm -hmm. That's a long struggle. Mm -hmm. I know. I have to do what I can do when I can do it until I um, make enough to quit doing nails. <laughs> So, if I were to recommend a book to read, it would be The One Thing Not to Murray Yet. The One Thing will give you how to help you juggle both these uh, mm -hmm. opportunities that you have right now. The MRA is going to get you passionate about real estate and definitely want to read. But The One Thing will help you, like, that way, like on tomorrow morning when you're at Summerlin, yeah. in Terry's class, you're only focused on learning about lead generation. Right. You know, right. And I think you already have that concept because you're in a good place. <sighs> Thank you so much. Seeing you, bro. I'm up there. I'm always down here. Let me know thank you. Help. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll see you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, thank you so much. Valentine's Day. Enjoy. Happy Valentine's Okay. We'll look back to you. And I apologize for being late. Oh, that's good. Okay, so that's the curriculum, like, uh, it's great. I think I talked a little bit about the agent curriculum, uh, launch, growth, achievement, all level phases. Honestly, I printed out those 10 pages because I know they're valuable. Okay, so great. go back through it. If you've ever taken win with buyers, win with sellers, oh my goodness, KW Connect has so much information. Really? Okay, good. Okay. And then the books. So these are all great books, and I highly recommend it. The ones that I'm really focused on would be all of them, actually. 
maybe not ship commercial, but these five are all ones to put on your potential uh, reading list, and okay. definitely the one thing. Jackie Ellis, and I'm here to talk to you about removing your limiting beliefs. Shortly after joining Keller Williams, I began attending all of the fabulous events available to us, like Mega Camp and Family Reunion. And on the stage were amazing agents openly sharing their strategies for success. And I, very much like you, would be in the audience writing down notes and taking those strategies back to my own marketplace, which I did implement. Well, a few years uh, after attending Mega Camp, once again in the audience, I realized as I was looking up at these amazing agents that they have fabulous businesses and that I would never have the, that sort of a high volume, high impact business. So when I got back into town, I took a quiet moment to myself and I, I took out a piece of paper and wrote a line down the middle and on the left side I wrote all of the things that I had going for me on my side that I could use to create one of these fabulous businesses. 
I had the training, and I could take the training through Keller Williams as many times as I wanted. There were models that if I just followed them, I could be a success like those on stage. And there were systems as well. After completing the left side of my page, I went over to the right side and I began to write what would be holding me back. And as I stared at the right side, I could not think of one thing to put on that piece of paper. I realized it was my limiting beliefs, my very own limiting beliefs that were holding me back. And once I removed them, there would be no holding me back. So fast forward to now, and those very agents that I saw on stage are now my friends. And I'm well on the track to one of those very businesses that I so admired. I want to know, do you have limiting beliefs? Do you recognize them? And what are you going to do to remove them? So, um, the removing limiting beliefs at the first page you have, um, we talked about, um, you will need to clear your mind of limiting beliefs before you can successfully develop at a higher level. Are any of these thoughts in your head? I don't have enough time for training. I can't be successful in this market. I can't devote three hours each day to lead generators. Um, it's important to investigate all the things that are holding us back. The, um, <clears throat> I think that there's you know, some good exercises in here that I gave you. It actually talks about partnering up in the full workshop and you would um, ask for a limiting belief. So I would encourage you, like this page eight one right here, okay. to reflect back on this and, and remove it. Um, we're not gonna do the exercise now, just so we can spend sure. more time. Okay. And then uh, ideally, you know, I was gonna talk a little bit about the current uh, belief that's holding back. Do you have anything right now that when we looked at those questions on the previous page? Well, I would just say it comes, still probably comes back to that time blocking, making sure that I um, you know, make enough time in the morning to time block the things that I think will lead generation. Okay. So at least good thing there is you're more solution-based in the sense that you're just going to start time blocking to get things done. So it's nothing like you're not not uh, calling your people because you don't know what to say or there's no fear holding you back necessarily. You're just focused at this point and you focus on you know, things that are going to change to improve your performance, right? Yes. Okay. So where it's coming from is your programming around that and investigating that. There's a lot of things. We don't have time to go down that. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, and uh, one is what I call the recapitulation exercise that I've done not fully, so that's a fun one. Uh, but we all have programming that a lot of it's not serving us anymore, okay? And have you heard of what uh, NLP, neuro-linguistic programming? No, I haven't. Okay, so NLP, there's a class that Terry recommends here in Vegas um, that she sent all her kids to, Terry Breedis. Okay. And uh, it's on my growth plan. I've never gone to it, but I've taken classes like language and sales through Keller Williams that is based in neuro-linguistic programming, but I've never went to it. So. It's a definite way to simplify the world and start uh, kind of basing things off of a, a nice foundation. So NLP would be something I consider. Okay. That's not my thing. All right, then we're back to being accountable. All right, so being accountable. This is not my favorite one, E to P is, but I'll tell you what, being accountable is a great way to to really move yourself forward. So the you have the ignorance based and the reality based person. Okay, the victim or accountable. Now it's actually human nature for the first thought to be rooted most of the time subconsciously in fear. Did you know that? I and so that. Yeah. And it's because well our way our brains work is we're looking to see if something's an opportunity or if it's a risk. Okay, so we default towards victim subconsciously. The trick is to make the second thought an accountable thought, okay? So life's gonna happen, right? Like we all know, we've all been around, this is my 39th birthday, so 
like, you know, we've been around a little while, and we've experienced some highs and lows, right? So when life happens, it's our opportunity to be better, and the best way is to be accountable. So I can give you an example about two years ago, I had something that was really uncomfortable that I was dealing with that came about. And, you know, it was, it was tough. It was one of those things, like, usually you try to give it, like, a five-second funeral or a five-minute funeral. And this was one of those five-hour, five-day type of things, right? So as you're thinking about it and you get all that emotion, what I chose to do is I walked over to the board that says be accountable right over there. That is this same diagram. And I looked at the questions. So on there, there's a list of questions. So I asked myself, am I asking these questions or those questions? And so I wrote down all the questions on the victim side. I wrote down all the questions on the accountable side. And then I answered the accountable side. So not that the thing got easier to deal with uh -huh. in the sense that it was still life and I still had to progress through it. Like it was something that had to take a little time. Yet I went at it with a high level of integrity and accountability because I focused on the questions that will move me forward. And then if I was asking the other questions, it wasn't a slap on my wrist, right? Like if I said, uh, if everyone would do their job, like it's okay if I said that, which I didn't. But if I said that, that just be aware of it and then say, okay, if it's to be, then it's up to me. And you have the empowering question. So if life ever hits you or when it hits you and you're not responding at the highest level that you can, you do this, come in there and answer the accountable questions. And I tell you, your brain will start to be focused on the um, solution, not the problem. Okay? I like that. So I will, and I've had people come through recently that had serious things and I said, okay, here you go. And I just gave them this piece of paper. Because, you know, it's, we gotta, we gotta do the work ourselves. So I love this being accountable. I think that's where uh, you can be making very many changes until you're, you're seeking reality, acknowledging reality, you're owning it, finding solutions, and being on with it. That's the ultimate success formula right there. All right, we're gonna watch this video. Oh, here we go. Being a victim or someone that doesn't seek reality, fights reality, blame, personal excuses, Ways and hope. I know no one's listening, but if you are, you probably are a victim <laughs> at times. And then being accountable, like seeks reality, acknowledges reality, owns it, finds solutions, and get on with it. That's the ultimate success formula. I know no one's watching. If you are, you're probably accountable. Gina Rollins, and I'm here to talk to you about accountability and what accountability means to me. You know, accountability in all reality is that it's the foundation of your day. And when I wake up in the morning, for me to go work out, if I don't have some kind of accountability, it doesn't happen. And so what do I do? I have a trainer. I pay him, therefore it forces me to show up and work out early in the morning. We have so much natural ability and it's get us so far in life. But the reality is, without some structure, and some accountability that allows us to move past our natural tendencies. So for example, our accountability for in our, inside our real estate team is our 401s, which is you know, our accountability tool that Kelly Williams has taught us to use with our team members. And so we find out what are their, their yearly goals, how can we break that into a monthly goal, and then how can we do that in the four weeks, each week, moving them towards that. And it's not just about business goals and financial goals, but it's personal goals. I find out what's important to them, they find out what's important to me, and together we grow the business. You know, accountability isn't always roses. You know, sometimes life steps in, and the cool thing about Keller Williams is we really focus on identifying that. We've got the tools to understand uh, when you're heading off the road of accountability and blaming yourself, blaming others, because you're not going to get anywhere. And so that's where accountability steps in. And you can make the decision to step out of that, move forward, get back into the language that's going to move you forward, and use the tools that these perspectives give you. 
you know, having that and having a plan and focusing back on that is where accountability can totally make a difference, change your life, and quite frankly, change your family's life, your destiny, your legacy.
uh, Rick Kind, and I brought great questions, and he approved it. I could get, I could advance myself like crazy just by sitting down with one of my lawyers. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I encourage you to take back that seven circles and maybe think of who is someone in the area after you've rated, if you've already rated all seven, who is someone, not that you need to seek them, but if it's the one that you are looking to make improvement, hey, why not maybe reach out and find out what they did, how they did it, and how they got back. Because they're gonna have different beliefs, they're gonna have different action steps, and you can learn a lot from that. Make sense? Yeah, great idea. Okay. And then the being accountable session from Tony, this is great. So Gina Ron talked about how it's sometimes it's uncomfortable on being accountable. You know the best way to make it not uncomfortable with someone? is to make it black and white with low judgment. So I'm on the ELC with my market center for 2020, and I'm really excited. And I told him, I said, hey guys, I am looking forward to failing forward in this small group. What I would really help me is if we could have a low judgment, high accountability environment. Okay, so low judgment meaning, I'll, honestly, with the camera being on, I'm not but you already saw me get a little emotional, right? Yeah. So like I can, if I feel like I'm not being judged, I can give a lot. Like I can just be transparent. So that's what I like to do. So low judgment is important to me. High accountability is also important to me. If I say I'm gonna do something and I don't, like I expect that people that care about me to mention it, and I'm okay with that. So when you look at these questions, like let me ask you a question, okay? Let's say, um, what was your goal last week? Do you have, did you have a recent goal like last week? Did you have any goals in January? In January, no. Did you have any goals? Yes, to uh, contact, there was about four different groups. To contact four different mm -hmm. people. How did you do? I did, did you contact all four of them? I contacted three. You contacted three, mm -hmm. awesome. How do you feel about that? I felt pretty good, but I still needed to that last one. Okay, and you chose that. Good. <laughs> and uh, based on how you did, what is <clears throat> your goal and what do you need to do now? So based on how you did last month, what would be your goal and what do you need to do now? Back up here. So you did three. Let's yes. say you had four past times a month. So now we're in February. Is it to do four? Again? Yes, at least four. Okay, and you missed one from before. Mm -hmm. So were you thinking about doing five or keep it at four? Keep it at four and just finish the four, stay focused to make sure I contact all of them and follow up. Okay, so is there anything that could keep you from doing that, contacting the four in February? Just time management, I think. Okay. You know, gets the way, life oh. gets in the way. And okay, so you, you may need a little training or support to do that on the time slot. I highly recommend for your volunteer to be connected and maybe look at time blocking. So, how did that feel? Good. Did you feel like I judged you or that? No. It's all about you. So, yeah. this is a black and white question. I actually did a follow up question in here that I shouldn't have. I actually tried to lead you to what I thought you should do, which was five instead of four. Right. I did, and that's because that's how, we're pro that's how I'm programmed. And I, but if I can keep it to this black and white, Holding others accountable. If you met with Yolanda in February and you had a form and you asked these questions, you guys would deepen your relationship, not get you apart. But if when you're in a meeting, you're like, hey, I, you're on my team and I need you to hit your appointments, so you hit your financial goals because I'm wasting time if you're not hitting your financial goals. And I'm like, you only did three. Come on, we talked about it. In fact, when we set the goal of four, we realized that's not even that hard anyway. Like, come on, can't you do five this next month? No, I want to do four. Come on, do it for me. Okay, how did that go? It, it doesn't, it's, there's a gray area, and there is no firm standard, and it's not helping you become better. So what I do is I put these questions, it's my four and one, and the questions are just some of that. And, and that's what you'll, you'll have, you have those questions. So I encourage you to share it with someone, probably not a significant other, 
and that's uncomfortable, but if you weren't around the office bringing in some accountability, asking these questions, keep it black and white, and worry more about progress, not perfection. Okay, so do you have any aha about the being accountable? Just some great ideas that, uh, you know, you need to focus on maybe what your goal is, So I think what I heard you say is that you're going to look for role models around here, and you're going to look for someone to share your goals and have uh, a low judgment, high accountability conversation with you. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. I like that. Um, okay, so questions on this perspective. Are you transparent with yourself about your actions? That's a hard one, because sometimes we're our own worst enemy, and we're our own, oh, that's okay, I wasn't feeling good that day. So, you are we very transparent with yourself about your actions? You know, I definitely had to improve on that. I was one that needed to. Are you transparent with others about your actions? Right? That's a hard one too. Like when I was a team leader like Darren, I had to be accountable to Terry. She was my four in one role model or partner, right? Accountability partner. Don't you think there's a filter? Because what can she do? She can sign my check. Or she did not sign my check, right? So it was, it was. We had a great, great, great relationship, okay. But if we would have hired someone else to hold me accountable on that, I think it actually would have been better because there's no filter, no judgment. So when you're looking for others to be accountable to, have it someone that speaks your language that'll give you what you're desiring, which isn't judgment, isn't their ideas. Listen. Like just once a month, you called me and I asked you those five questions, and it was positive. If you were being victim based, or if you were like totally off, I have permission maybe to like say, okay, are you being serious? Are you being transparent with yourself about this? Or do you have limiting beliefs? Those are positive things to ask. But make sure you're getting someone that you're comfortable with and create a very transparent relationship. Okay. And then, do you share your goals with others? And have you set a goal to when you hire a coach? Those would be my questions, okay? I love both because it's a social accountability environment. And if I'm telling my people that I'm going to do something, I'm gonna do it. Just because they're they're there and I need to, okay? Bottom line. Okay, so become a higher achiever. For each of these perspectives, write down the one thing that you'd like to implement. That's what this is right here. So just keep it real simple, okay? Nothing crazy. So when it comes to committing with self-mastery, what's something you would like to do? Can we help you? Yes. <laughs> Have you done that DISC or KPA before? No. Take a DISC test. Okay. Okay, so that's because it's about knowing my strengths and my weaknesses. So DISC or KPA. So validate Find out who you are before you try to make yourself better. What are your strengths? Focus on your strengths. So that would be a good one, okay? This. Committing to the 80-20 principle. What's something you'd like to do for that one? I'd definitely focus on uh, lead generation and do the time blocking for the morning so you can make your calls. Oh, time blocking. Yeah. For you. No, I'm not trying to do it for you, but it's time blocking. Now moving from E to P, that's where we're gonna stop doing what we've always done and be a little more purposeful, with, you know, have the focus and things like that. So what would you do to move from E to P? What would you do? So do peer accountability, select peer accountability partner. This one's huge right there. Seriously, you go from 39% to 79% just by having a written goal Step one means you don't have a business plan to submit, nothing important. Yet, 79% chance of success just with a peer partner. It's amazing. Okay, so of all 
those six things we talked about, what's the one that you're most passionate about, that you feel is the right one to select right now? Gosh, I'd say probably commit to the 80-20 principle. Okay, and the 80-20 principle, the plan of action was what? The tag black. And we circle, circle that one. Yeah. I agree. That will be good because then you can actually fit the time block of all the other five in there. So that's your one thing, okay? Now, the next one on here is going to be take action. So I kind of cheated. I gave you one. What are three? Let's write number one to become the time block. And then what would be number two off that past list? by um, February 29th. Okay. Leap year. Yeah. Yeah. You get a bonus year. That way you're, hey, I'm a March 4 and 1. I'm March 4 and 1. And you know, you know, that way you have plenty of time. And then the last one, uh, then when you take a disc test, that one's fairly easy. Okay. So, you know, I go in between, unless you are open and dating with stuff. No, I think the middle of
was buying it. Like the first time I bought it, like technology went down, so I didn't even, it was like for five minutes it fell, so I just shut it off. And uh, you know, this is one thing where I would, I know this is personal perspective, I love it, and there's still so many that are rated four, five, six. You know, there's just so many of those that are still in position of them up. But that's okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. No, it was a great class. I really appreciate it. Yep. I'm definitely going to, it's great to put a date to your goal mm -hmm. so that you will do it. And yep. like I said, I'll share it. I'll share it with someone else. Yeah. I think you're in the right spot. I'm really excited that you're at Cloud Land. But thank you so much for coming. We wouldn't have been in class without both of you guys. It would have been, but it would have just been this. You know. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys, if you need anything from me, you can just email me, and I get you the materials. I have them in the Google Drive, ready to send it your way. I'd love to share it. And if you're out of Keller Williams, out of town, uh, on the West Coast preferably, I'm looking to teach this one time out, out of town this year. So please hit me up. It's Jones at kwu.com or um, you can just comment on this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture of all your books. So yes. Sometimes they're easier to find if you have a... Thanks, guys.